twosies. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope everybody is as exhausted as I am. Uh, that'll really help you get through this uh, incredibly stimulating conversation about Crossref. Um, unfortunately, my uh, co-presenter, Susan Collins, cannot make it today. She's not feeling well. So I'm going to have a conversation for the next 20 minutes about where PKP and Crossref have been working together to make services for Crossref members better within OJS. Uh, uh, maybe just a quick show of hands. How many folks here are using Crossref with OJS and PKP? Amazing, great. So I have some good news uh, and some admissions of our chronic and constant failures. Um, first of all, PKP and Crossref are BFFs. Oh, cool, a little square next to the emoji. Always, always good. Um, we've been at this for a long time. Uh, I found out the other day talking to Juan that the first Crossref plugin for PKP uh, and OJS was developed in 2009. That is some time ago. Um, Crossref will be celebrating their 20th anniversary next year. Um, so that's 10 years. That's, that's a pretty long time. Uh, and through that time, they've been sort of consistent supporters of PKP. That original plugin that they developed was made from the ground up, uh, from something that did not really exist at all, and was sort of a huge boon to folks, I think, who wanted to have an easier way to submit their DOIs within OJS, uh, which was not always easy. <clears throat> so since then, um, we've managed to move to a new deposit API. Those of you who are on OJS 3.1.2, uh, James looked mad at me there for a second. 3.1.2, um, have access to the new deposit API, which works a lot better than the old deposit API. Actually, just to make myself feel bad, how many of you have tried to submit uh, DOI using OJS and had it stuck on submitted in the status? Yeah, OK, great. Yeah, I, I'm surprised it's not more of you. Um, so that's addressed in the new deposit API. That is no longer a problem. So just update to 3.1.2, and that won't be a thing. Um, we also added reference linking, which is really great. Uh, and we added funding. So you can actually pull up a funder registry and add funding metadata to your articles. Uh, and that's, um, what database is that? Who does the database, James? I don't remember. James doesn't remember. But it's provided. So it's actually like an autocomplete for funding registries, and you can put in your funding amount. And those things get submitted to Crossref as well. Uh, and reference linking, if you're curious about how it works, please flag me down. It is not opaque at all, which is what I'm going to be talking about while I'm here. Um, so, in 2014, PKP became a sponsoring organization, which means um, not only do some of our hosted clients, uh, we cover their deposit fees and we cover their registration fees, but we also provide to a list of uh, low-income countries free uh, Crossref hosting and free Crossref submission. Um, so we have roughly 37 publishers, organizations, or clients. I say roughly because some of those are like full organizations and some of them are individual journals. So it's probably closer to 50 or so journals that we're totally sponsoring uh, and 37 unique uh, prefixes. Uh, and 17 of those have waived deposit fees. So we're offering Crossref services to 17 individual journals. And so far, I believe we're at about 15,000 DOIs. That's pretty good in a five-year span, I would say. Um, but what I know is that many of them probably have tried to deposit DOIs and not been able to. And that's sort of been a major issue for Crossref members on the, the OJS platform. Um, so this year, we've really entered into what I've referred to as a bit of an emotional support partnership. Um, dealing with the Crossref folks and dealing with PKP folks, we both have sort of an open uh, support community. So if you go to Crossref or you email Crossref, whether or not you're a Crossref member, they will happily try to answer your questions. They will do so whether or not you are giving them money because they want the metadata to be good and they really care about the quality of the service. And just this year, they actually opened up a forum at community.crossref.org, which looks a lot like our forum. And their support people are answering questions much like we do on our support forum. But there's also cross-pollination. So if there's a question about DOIs and OJS that they can't answer, they tag me in, and I roll over and answer those questions. And then if somebody asks those questions on our forum, I get tagged in, and I answer those questions. Uh, so we're trying to help each other uh, in a big way here, but it's also really nice because now when I get to talk to somebody from Crossref, um, I have a little bit of a shoulder to cry on. I no longer have to feel completely crazy on my own, and this is especially true for the folks at Crossref. Isaac Farley in particular, he's sort of their head of support. Um, I know he really needed someone to talk to about problems, uh, and mostly he tells me and I just smile and nod, but it's really good for him. Uh, so we're working together to sort of spell things out in a more clear way. 
Um, geez. So just after the library publishing forum in May, um, we drafted an MOU between Crossref and PKP to start up a Crossref uh, and PKP working group. Uh, it's really funny in the Google Calendar, theirs always says PKP working group and ours always says Crossref working group. Uh, it's very clear that um, we've really thought well about what we were going to call this thing. Uh, so what we've done is we've got this support system that I addressed where I help Isaac and Isaac helps me and we sort of communicate openly. But we've also started to have a real conversation about the development of Crossref features and functionality within PKP software, where the stress points are for our users. Um, we know from Crossref's side that probably the biggest issue is they can't upgrade to 3.1.2 or they've had a hard time upgrading. And obviously we can't be there all the time when somebody has a heavily customized version of OJS that isn't easily migrated. Um, but we do now have support documentation on our Docs Hub that addresses the, the process of migrating. So that's at least a start. Um, but increasingly what we're doing is addressing the stress features sort of within the plugin itself. Um, one thing that's a, a very clear example of this is the DOI plugin uh, exists in a completely different place than the Crossref plugin. And there's no mention of DOI registration agencies on the DOI plugin. So we know that lots of people uh, start their journal and they turn on the DOI plugin and then they set their uh, suffix creation uh, uh, pattern and then they hit yes and then everything starts getting assigned DOIs and they go, I did it, I have DOIs. But they're not regis registering them with anything. And we don't even indicate to them that they ought to or should or that it's important. Um, so sometimes we get people who have been saying like, yeah, I've got something like 2,000, 3,000 DOIs I've, I've deposited. And then Crossref goes, you, like, you don't, you're not a registered user. <laughs> like none, of this, none of this has ever been working. Um, so instead of having those things be so opaque across the system where we sort of added these features over time without really thinking about it, um, we're going to start trying to roll this into the workflow a little bit more uh, intentionally. Uh, secondarily, we've been talking about development and distribution of PKP-specific educational and support materials. Over the last year, uh, Crossref has been working on this uh, just humongous uh, support curriculum. Uh, it's called the Crossref curriculum. When they shared it with me, it was so big it wouldn't fit in one Google Doc. I think it was like 400 pages. It's just this monster document that is about all of the things you can do with Crossref services and the Crossref DOI. Uh, and in that, they included specific reference to OJS and PKP documentation. So we're mutually supporting each other. They don't have to maintain PKP or OJS information, and we don't have to maintain their information. We can sort of play off of one another and make sure we're getting the message correct. Um, I'm not sure what collaborate of research means. Susan wrote that, uh, and since she's sick, I'm going to assume it was related to a fever dream she was having. Uh, <laughs> And then development of future areas of cooperation. So obviously we have an investment in each other. I was just at the Crossref Live event in Amsterdam last week where we talked about a lot of ways that we can help serve the OJS community and the PKP community in general. And we're trying to make sure that we're open to a broader conversation, any place that we're maybe missing. Um, a good example would be Crossmark. So we've never had a Crossmark plugin that's really worked. And at this conference, uh, Crossref decided that they would no longer have fees for Crossmark. Crossmark is going to be free to use if you're already using your deposit fees. You don't have to pay extra for Crossmark anymore. So obviously, the pressure is now on us to make sure that our Crossmark services work, um, which means we have to build a plugin. Uh, and I'll get to how that might happen here in a second. So the Crossref curriculum came out. Uh, and I would point this out. It's probably going to be released in spring 2020. I said came out. That was past tense. Uh, will be coming out in spring 2020. And right now at the PKP Documentation Hub, um, we've added fresh documents for people who are running OJS 3.1.2, so if you're fully upgraded. It includes uh, documentation on the Crossref deposit, um, similarity check, uh, and authenticate. Um, what else is there? Reference linking and the funding. All three are covered in the Crossref uh, documentation. Um, we've also been talking about co-development. So this is relatively new. Um, over the course of the last few months, uh, we've been having conversations with Crossref where we say, they say to us, um, you know, you guys probably host more journals on your platform than Wiley has. Um, there's, there's many. Um, and a lot of our members are having problems with submitting their content. How can we solve that problem? Um, and when James and I were on that call, because we're very Canadian, what we heard was, is there a way that we could meet together to have a series of other meetings about a way that we could find a way to make this right? And what uh, Jeffrey Builder at Crossref was saying was, who do I give the money to so that this will happen. Um, so <laughs> over the last month or so, we've basically started entering into a conversation about what problems we're going to solve. 
And this partnership, again, is super important. At this Crossref event, I was sitting uh, across the table from a Wiley rep who was talking about how expensive DOIs were. And I remember being really mad because <laughs> I thought, you have a lot of money. Um, and this Crossref deposit fee uh, you know, is probably not breaking the bank for you. But for some journals, you know, a membership to Crossref, uh, it's like 275 or 270 a year American. That's a big deal. That's, that's a decision about whether or not they can even be part of the service. So we want to make sure that this is a, a good value proposition for these, these journals uh, and that the service works really well. So the next steps, uh, we're going to throw money at the problem. Um, we have a proposal for co-development, which more or less came out of the sprint. Uh, if you were here in the first two days, it's going to be part of the sprint announcement. And we'll have sort of a position open up. But we will be probably hiring a person to solve all these issues. And then secondarily, we're going to have a conversation about the metadata uh, in OJS and Crossref through this, um, uh, this project called Coalition Publica in Canada. Um, some of the issues that you may have run into using DOIs in your own journal, for example, um, you know that the, the name fields in OJS are required, first name and last name. Uh, I guess in 3.2, you'll be able to enter one name. But what I've learned uh, working on some journals like those by the American Library Association is in order to get through a form, they would write first name, American Library, last name, association. Um, and I don't know how you feel about the status of corporations as people, but I don't think they are. Uh, so we need to add a corporate name field, and we need to make some more adjustments to make our metadata a little bit more responsible here. And that's a big part of this conversation about metadata review, making sure that we're capturing what Crossref needs to more accurately describe the work that you're putting in. Um, predominantly, we just want you to know that we're committed to making life easier for Crossref members. Um, I know that a lot of people rely on this, and you spend money on it. So you want to make sure that it works well. And we're hearing those things. So if you have feedback, you can certainly feel free to flag me down. Um, I was going to say I'm happy to hear it. I'm not always happy to hear it. But I will listen to you. And I do think your, your uh, comments are important. Um, we want to make sure we catch those friction points. We want to know where things aren't working. And more importantly, Crossref wants to know where things aren't working. Uh, and we do have a really good friendship uh, with them. So I think that's it. Great. Thank you.